Manchester United used to be box office because we were the best team in England. Manchester United now, we're box office for all the wrong reasons. As you can see, I'm not in my usual place for this match reaction. I came out to Ireland, uh, unfortunately, for a funeral. And there, <laughs> I've been watching the slow death of Manchester United as a competitive football team for so long. And it doesn't feel like an over-exaggeration to say that, that what we've just seen there in that second half there today is... I mean, the soft underbelly of Manchester United has been exposed so often in so many games. But to give that game away there... Villa were competitive from the first minute, but we were 2-0 up. We had that game managed. But there was no in-game management. Bruno giving it two fingers, really, to Villa. Like, chanting, for calling him a cheat after he just got stamped on, by the way. Villa were dirty today. But wow. Wow. I feel almost feel like... Well, I don't know. What's the point of getting annoyed anymore? It's like you're not allowed to enjoy watching Manchester United as a Manchester United fan anymore. We've had too much success in the Premier League. I don't know what... There's so many changes that went in today. Ilanga, I thought he played very, very well coming in. Ronaldo and Rashford, obviously injured. Uh, even if Rashford wasn't injured, he deserved to be dropped. Greenwood, I think Ilanga and Greenwood both play well. But the, the complete lack of in-game management in that game is staggeringly bad. It's so... Look, in that game, you can... First 30 minutes, easily. Let's be honest, the best we've seen under Ragnik. It was Palace, but it was better. Everybody, to a man, came with the right attitude, the right application from the first whistle, first to second balls, pressing as a unit, organised defensively, solid midfield. And the midfield shape completely changed in that second half. I don't know what, maybe there's something wrong with the instructions that came out in that second half. <clears throat> because Fred was almost operating as a false nine, being the first to press the ball. Even that was even happening when we were 2-0 up. Game management is all about, at the point where you're 2-0 up, it doesn't matter if you bring Coutinho. It doesn't matter what Villa do. It doesn't matter the fact that Villa were in that game. The game was United. Easily. All we had to do was manage the last 15, 20 minutes of it. Instead, we completely let it slip. Villa, they started to get into the game, into the game. It was a little bit fortunate to drop to his foot, but it was a decent finish. De Gea could have done nothing. And then it was a good goal to make it 2-2. But I, I don't know. I, maybe, maybe I should be going more angry. Maybe I should be more fucking angry. But I'm looking at that going, I almost expect it these days. I don't know when this response is going to change. And even when the response is there, I've always felt that since the Palace game, that at some point there will, the penny will drop. The, 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 the Ragnik system will start feeling more natural to these players. And so look, he went to the 4 2 3 1 today and it worked. Bruno operates, operating as that number 10. Ilanga offering the real width. Greenwood on the right. Cavani up front with setting the tempo that he does when he plays up front. He can play an isolated, an isolated striker. I don't think Ronaldo can by comparison. But he used a system that the players are more used to. And it worked. Fred and Matic worked. Everybody did their job in that first half. Well, the first 30 minutes. And then we tailed off. And then from the 30th minute, it was very similar to Palace. Uh, we just tailed off. But Villa really came into the game. The crowd were getting behind them. And United just let it completely slip. And I don't know now. I don't know at what point this changes. I, don't, I, I, I can't look at Maguire being dropped or Ronaldo being dropped or Rashford being dropped or, or the youngsters in Alanga coming in or anything. I can't look at personnel. I can't look at formations. I don't know where to look. I'm dead confused now as to how... This momentum shifts in the right direction because it was full steam ahead for that first 30 minutes. Seeing United play like that, I was like, wow, where has this been? This has to be the minimum going forward. And to compare that to that second half, it's like, my God, are you a professional footballer? Are you really a Premier League footballer? It's like their mind, they were just, their mind was completely, there was, the mind was somewhere else. And they're supposed to be professionals. I don't know where the problem is. Is it to do with the attitudes and the mentalities of the players? Is it to do with the tactics and the formation? Is it to do with the coaching and the instructions that aren't going in from the coaching staff on the training ground? Where the fuck is the problem? Because for me, it just looks like a goddamn soft underbelly. It looks like a complete lack of in-game management. And for me, I have to lay that both at the feet of the players and the feet 
of Ralph Rannick and his coaching staff there? Could there have been a change that happened a bit earlier to give Manchester United a bit more control? I'm not saying that Donny van der Beek is the answer. He's not the messiah of midfield that some say he is. But if we're looking at Manchester United losing a bit of control in midfield, then bringing on someone like van der Beek for Fred... Fred very good at the press, very, very bad defensively sometimes. You can't really rely on Fred for the full 90 minutes. He got two assists, one for Bruno's second goal, and then he got the assist for, for Villa's first goal back. Can you rely on him for the full 90 minutes? I don't think you can, especially if you're looking at a central midfielder who's the first to press ahead of Cavani when you 2-0 up. It just didn't make any sense. It wasn't professional. That's what I would call that second-half performance. And we are talking about, and I keep saying this, actually, we're talking about the elite, the top, top level. The Premier League is supposed to be the best in the world. And for them to have a drop-off, that's sheer, that's steep, that's severe. In that second half, they're just not, they're not screwed on. Their, their, their head's not in the game. I don't know where they are. I don't know whether they're putting their feet up before the game's already finished. But complacency came in and it stunk out the place. And I, as I said, I don't know where you go from here. What, what's, what's the next step? What's the next direction that you walk towards? Yeah, as I said, you, you can, can, are you still going to blame the players? Are you going to blame the formation? Are you going? What are you going to blame? What are you blaming for that tail off in that second half? I just don't think they know what it is. Game management. It should be far simpler. You're in a situation where you're two 0 up. You've got control, and then we didn't have control in that second game, did we? The midfield control was gone, <clears throat> and I think that's because Fred was pressing way too high. That should have been stopped by players on the pitch, by tactics from the side. It shouldn't have been Fred being first to press alongside Cavani. Not when he's one of the two central midfielders who's supposed to be screening and protecting your defence. When it's 2-0 up, you don't have to have Fred pressing that high when you're 2-0 up. When you're 2-0 down, you probably do because you need an extra body there. It's just, it doesn't make any sense from United anymore, man. And I don't know who to blame. I don't know where to point the fingers to. But there's no Maguire scapegoat here. There's no Rashford scapegoat here. There's no Ronaldo scapegoat here. Who is the, the, the... Do we need... I don't want a scapegoat. But there has to be... So, I don't know. I'm so confused. Because every... Even inside a 90-minute... Even inside a... I'm sorry. Even inside a 90-minute game, you saw two, three different versions of that United team. First half, first 30, brilliant. Tailed off towards the end of the first half. Right, okay, that's fine. That can, that can happen in football sometimes. But to come out in that second half and just let Villa control the game, to not make any changes, maybe in the personnel, maybe in the, in the approach on the pitch, poor. Poor from Ragnick, poor from the players as well. That's, that's what I mean. I don't, know where, I don't know where I'm pointing my finger towards now, but I thought that was the response I was waiting for after watching that first 30 minutes. I really, really did because it felt like Palace, but it felt better than Palace. It was a proper cohesive. Tellez, I thought, was fantastic, offering real width down the left-hand side. And then it just unraveled, really unraveled. And now there's going to be so many questions to ask after that. Are you putting the blame at the, the, the feet of the manager or the blame at the feet of the players? Because somebody has to take responsibility for what we saw there because that's exactly what the players didn't do. Nobody took responsibility in that second half to see that game out. Dead and buried. We can't even... Look, I'm just nearly nine minutes I'm talking about the game and I haven't even spoken about the fact that Bruno scored two goals. Back amongst it. Cracking finish for the second one. Oh, man, there's nothing better than hitting the other side of the bar and hearing that crash. At the same end that Skull scored that body as well. Celebrated hard in front of the away fans and they just let that slip. It's fucking embarrassing. It's shameful. Where's the leadership? Where's the in-game management? There's no way we should have lost that game. As good as Villa were, there's no way we should have lost it from that position 2-0. Game was in our hands and all we had to do was simply hold the ball. And that's what we cannot do with this team. We are so bad at controlling possession and the tempo of the game in the middle of the park. It has to move from defence to attack quickly. When United attack, we attack quickly and we do it well. But when it comes to controlling a game and you watch that City game against Chelsea early and you, th you look at United and go, <coughs> you're choking. You're really choking watching it. I don't, <coughs> I don't know where we turn from here. We've got a game in a few days, of course. You know, results can bury everything. But United need performances and results right now. We had the performance for the first 30 and the last 60. Well, no, we didn't.
I'm not even gonna speak about man of the match. I'm not gonna speak about anything else. But seriously, ladies and gents, what's next? What is next?